What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. A lot of interesting bodybuilding news happened this weekend. The first story I want to talk about here, the results of the Oxygen Gym Dubai Pro Classic Physique Competition. A lot of people have been talking about this show. $20,000 prize money, big check for first place, and realistically, really big money for Classic Physique. So we knew about a lot of the guys that were doing this show. We talked a lot about Wesley, who just won his Olympia qualification. Obviously, you knew that Rough Diesel was doing the show. You knew that Branch Chen was doing this show, Chen Kang. And Jose Maria Mete was also doing it. So the results, not super surprising, honestly. Uh, Rough Diesel won the show. I think everybody pretty much expected that because as far as Olympia placings go, um, he's by far the best bodybuilder in this lineup on paper. And he's beaten all of these guys at one point or another on the Olympia stage, the most competitive stage of all of Classic Physique. So I wasn't too surprised to see him win. I thought he looked really good here. And honestly, I do think looking at him, he does look a little bit fuller. He has, he has a little bit more pop to his physique. I think he is taking advantage of this slight weight increase, however slight it might be. It looks like it is having a noticeable effect on his physique. To me, he just looked overall fuller than usual and just bigger than usual. Not by a lot, but by a noticeable margin. Now, in second place, this was what surprised me, Fabio Junio. So I was actually expecting it to either be Wesley, Branch, or potentially Jose, but Fabio looked incredible here. He's the guy in the black trunks between Terrence and Wesley. Really dense, really muscular, really conditioned classic physique. I really like the package that he brought here. And I just think overall, this was a highly competitive classic physique show. Now, in third place, you had Wesley Visser. So again, he just won a show. He just qualified for the Olympia. And he beat two of the other big names that were doing this show, Branch Chen, Chen Kang, and also Jose Maria Mete, who he just beat at the last show. So those were pretty, pretty competitive classic physique guys that have a lot of hype. Wesley beat both of them. I wasn't really... I like to see him get compared with Terrence, but I wasn't really expecting Wesley to ever beat Terrence at this point. But I was still really impressed with Wesley here, and I really think that he's bringing one of the best versions of his physique at these past two competitions. I think at the Olympia, he's going to move up, and he's going to be more in that conversation. But I could say the same thing for Terrence here. I expect Terrence to be back in the conversation this year at the Olympia. I really do think that this weight limit, is going to give him the advantage that he needs to be back in the top three. I don't know if he's going to be a runner-up again this year because I was really impressed with Ramon Dino last year. But I could see him finding himself back in the top three, moving up a couple of placings, especially if the issue last year really was the fact that he missed weight, that he had to make weight like within an hour at the last minute, and that's what threw off his physique. I think this weight increase will really lend itself to a pretty significant advantage for, for Terrence here. And I won't be surprised one bit if we see him right back in that top three and right next to Chris Bumstead again. Now, speaking of the Olympia, the big news that came out this weekend, and I first saw this, uh, Bob Chigarello did an interview with Big Rami. And he was, one, he was one of the guys that interviewed Rami months ago, asking Rami the same question. And Rami essentially gave him a maybe as far as whether or not he's going to do the Olympia. But the big breaking news this weekend was that Rami formally announced and I believe he did a couple other interviews too where he also announced, so he confirmed it like three times, that he will not be doing this year's Olympia. Now, I wasn't super surprised to hear this because typically, keep in mind, I mean, we're under six weeks out from the Olympia now. We're typically seeing quite a bit from Big Rami at this point in his prep. We have at least have seen something from him or his coach or his camp. At six weeks out, we have seen something from Rami every other year. This year, complete radio silence, not even training videos, no physique updates. So I kind of had a feeling that this announcement was coming, especially after the Arnold Classic. He did that after the Olympia, still placed outside of the top three there. And a lot of people are speculating, well, why is he not doing it? Is he done? Is he retiring? Will he never do it again? I do think he will compete at the Olympia again. And again, once you've won the Olympia, you're qualified for life. So Rami could just show up any year he wants, doesn't have to qualify. He can just show up to the Olympia. And I think he will do that in the future. I think the reason why he's taking this year off is because it was pretty obvious that even with the stem cell treatments for the nerve damage and just kind of the atrophy that he had, especially in his back and his triceps, I think that I feel like he just realized it's going to take more time, especially after the Arnold. I, I feel like he just knows that for if this is going to work, the stem cell treatments, the recovery, the rebuilding of that muscle, the retraining of that muscle, it's going to take some time. And I think that honestly, 
if Rami did the Olympia this year, I don't think enough time would have passed. If those were really the reasons why he got knocked down so many placings at the Olympia this year, which again, I believe is still the record from a champion to win the Olympia the year prior to drop to fifth place the next year. I think that's still the record for the most placings dropped in one single year from a guy that won the Olympia the year before. So if those were really the reasons, the the mid to lower back area, the triceps, the atrophy that he seemed to have, also a little bit flat, conditioning was a little bit off. But I really think the main issue, from what it seems like the judges are saying, is the back and the triceps and just that nerve damage atrophy look that he had there. So if that really was the big issue, I, I feel like that's going to take more than a year to completely fix if it is fixable. The stem cell treatment stuff, it's all very new technology. It's very case-by-case -case basis, and there's no really set standard for whether or not it's going to work or how much it will work if it does. Like, the answer to the question of will Rami come back with, like, a brand new back and brand new arms from this treatment, or will he come back with 10% better back or 10% better triceps, that answer really doesn't exist. It's, it's really kind of up in the air. It could happen. It could not. This type of medical technology is still so so new and so underused and understudied as far as, especially in this case, with a bodybuilder, how much muscle tissue tissue could a bodybuilder regain from this treatment, no one really knows. How much of the nerve damage could it repair? Half of it? All of it? None of it? Again, it's not really set in stone whether it's going to work or not. It's not like fixing a broken bone and saying, okay, it takes X amount of months to recover. This is a treatment. It's an ongoing thing, and he's gradually kind of measuring those results to see how much it works or doesn't work. And unfortunately for Rami, the odds are kind of working against him here because of the fact that really, aside from Jay Cutler, I think Jay's probably the best example of a bodybuilder that lost the title. He lost in 2008 to Dexter Jackson, and he was able to miraculously come back in 2009 and win the title back looking better than, arguably better than he ever looked. That is a very rare circumstance. And the, the odds of Rami being able to come back looking better than he ever looked and win the title back after placing fifth are slim. But I don't think it's impossible. I do think Rami will be back. And I do think there's a chance that when he comes back, he will have recovered enough to increase. I don't know if he can win the title back at this point. Seeing this new upcoming talent, it's really hard to say Rami is going to take the title from one of these young, improving, up-and-coming guys. But could he place higher than fifth and be back in the conversation if he comes back a year, two years from now, gives his body time to heal? I think so. But now, with Rami out of the mix, the only two former Mr. Olympias in this lineup are Brandon and Hadi Chupin. So does this elevate Brandon's name a little bit in terms of potential for a very high placing here, a guy that has been widely disregarded up until this point? I think it does. He no longer has to worry about Rami, who he just beat for the first time in the past two years of their rivalry last year. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Will Rami ever be back? And when he is back, do you think he's got a chance at winning? And with Rami out, does that now change any of your Olympia predictions currently for this year's Olympia? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know your top, let's say five, because Rami was fifth. Your top five Olympia predictions for this year's Olympia in the comments down below. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, a recent guest posing this weekend of James the Shed Hollingshead, a guy that is sitting out this season. He's sitting out this year's Olympia, focusing on building up his physique, making some improvements. And this is really the first time we've seen him showcase his physique on a stage to a guest posing extent as far as hitting all these different poses. And a lot of fans are excited to see James compete again on a bodybuilding stage in 2024. A lot of fans, big fan base. Honestly, I was looking at this and thinking he doesn't look that different to me. That's kind of my honest opinion here. I don't think he really looks significantly bigger. I think he just kind of looks the same. I think his legs look really good here, but his legs have always looked really good. And I think, you know, I'm kind of curious what the, uh, what the year long break was specifically targeted at as far as improvements or growing a specific body part. Because to me, as far as an off-season version of James, I really don't see that much difference. But I'm curious to know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you think James is going to do when he does come back? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, 
I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.